never, ever, ever use choice columns. It doesn't matter if you're using SharePoint, doesn't matter if you're using Dataverse. Guess what? There's no lookup column type in SQL Server. Imagine that. So what is a choice column? Well, a choice column is something that works a little differently in different data sources. I just mentioned SQL Server doesn't have one, okay? In SharePoint, whenever you create the column type, you could say choice, and you could put the items that you want the user to choose from. And it's the same thing with Dataverse, okay? But there are much better ways of implementing something that you want a choice for, okay? We could still have the users pick from a list of items for a column, that's completely fine. But using the inherent feature within SharePoint or Dataverse, I think is always a bad choice. So that's why I say never, okay? Now, I'm gonna open up this uh, second bullet point here. Why do people like choice columns so much? Well, they're very easy to set up and use, but they're not good for the long term. With complex types, what I run into are delegation issues. And uh, let's say if it was just a single line of text, we wouldn't have those issues. Or if it was a number, we could do a lookup on the number. And I say never use in any data source if you can avoid it. So if the SharePoint site, the SharePoint list is already there and there's tons of records, it might be more trouble than what it's worth to replace that choice column. But if you're creating things from scratch, I recommend always not using the choice columns. Now, it sort of does make sense if you're going to allow the users to be modifying the data directly. That probably makes most sense with SharePoint. But if you're building a Power Apps application or on a SharePoint list, why are users going directly to the SharePoint list? It's not a good idea to give your users direct access or let them know that they have permissions to modify data directly. If you allow users to modify the data directly, then um, you're opening yourself up for a lot of issues, some data integrity issues. You know, you could have somebody making making a change with the data that they don't realize is messing other things up. It's a good idea to sort of uh, keep some keep the users away from directly editing the data. And if it's a SharePoint list, uh, you don't have too much control over that, but there are things you can do to lock it down. OK, now, what are you going to use instead? So I say don't never use choice columns. Well, what are we going to use instead? OK, let me get some of this out of the way here. Um, I recommend you using single line of text. OK, typically your choices are texts. OK, so why not just have a single line of text that's going to hold the choice that they picked? Now, you can still have a drop down and in uh, Power Apps, and then you say the selected value or the drop down dot selected text dot value and patch that into the data source. Let's say you're using forms. I, I, I wouldn't go so far to say never, ever, ever use forms. I always like using patch over forms, but um, if you're if you're using a form within Power Apps and the data type is a single line of text, you're not going to get that drop down. Well, you need to add a drop down to the data card in the form and then set up the data cards update property to what is the, the selected the selected text dot value property of the drop down control. And that's how you would achieve that. So I recommend, yeah, with a single line of text that you have some type of a collection that you've defined. Now, a good place to define your collections is the app.formulas property. Uh, it would hold all the possible values. The, I guess the question comes down to how often do these choices change? Well, if you're using a choice, if you're you're thinking about using a choice column, um, Chances are that the, the data probably isn't going to change very often or maybe once a year, or once a quarter, they might ask you to add or remove an item out of the choices. So that's not that that you, you may be thinking that may not be that big of a deal. But um, why not have that set within the application, the application layer? Now, if the choices are going to change a lot then I'm going to recommend that you have a database table. OK, and I put here if you want to get fancy, create a new database table or SharePoint list to hold the values. OK, so that's what I'm talking about here. As a foreign key, you could just use the ID or the primary key column. OK, or just store the text. 
inside the the table it makes it very readable you know whatever let's say we've got a a drop down list or a choice of department okay so you got employees and there's a column called department what department do they belong to well you could have a drop down list inside your app that has all the departments defined and i can guarantee you that you probably don't need to add and change and remove departments from an organization all that often, unless it's a startup. <laughs> so uh, that's a lot of times what I recommend. Just put them in a simple collection, okay? But if that list needs to have additional uh, columns, some more information, like some items are active, some are inactive, some are relevant within a certain year or uh, date time range that type of thing then yeah you're going to need to build a table a database table and put all the relevant information in there and then i would recommend creating a crud screen for each uh drop down list value choice values that you want to use inside your application okay so in the employee table we could have a department it would be single line of text and then we got all these departments over here when that doesn't make sense is let's say department we are we are in a startup type of organization and they're adding removing and changing departments all the time well in that case i recommend that you set that up as a table that can be modified okay so in sharepoint you would take the id every sharepoint list has an id that's numeric and value it's like an auto number so you get all all of the department information in the department table and then over here in the the employees table, you're going to have a department ID and you're going to store the ID there. That's how you would handle that. Okay. Now you could store the, the name of the department in there, but what happens if the department name changes? Well, now you've got to go through all your employees that had the old value for the department and update it to the new. And that's not something that's going to happen automatically. Uh, I guess you could create a, a flow for that if you wanted to, but no, in, in relational database design, um, you don't want to have value stored in different places. So if the data needs to be updated, it's not being updated in five different places, five or more. <laughs> you just want to you just want to modify it one place and then everything else just works, you know, and uses that that, uh, you know, whatever item that changed. <laughs> I probably have a lot to say about this, but did you know that Dataverse, when you try to create a Boolean type of column, a yes, no, true, false, it creates a choice field. It creates a choice field of yes, no. <laughs> and it's a little, it, it, I wouldn't say it's difficult. It's uh, not so simple to work with within Power Apps, a, a choice field, um, especially when you're expecting a true false you know but let me know if there's anything that uh, any questions or any clarification that anyone has on the on this topic because I'd, I'd love to hear your questions and I'd, I'd sort of like to um, add on any new answers that i haven't included here thanks guys